Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Lisa Blackburn. This is my YouTube channel where we talk about everything I want to, science and math. And today we're talking about solutions, unit 10. Um, so anyway, a lot of this is vocabulary, so it's a little bit easier, not so much math. The math will be multiple choice when we do have the test, um, which makes it a little bit easier also. Where do I want to put my water? Here we go. Um, so anyway, uh, but it will have a little bit of math, and y'all as honors will have a little bit of math, regular doesn't, so you get to figure out freezing point depression and boiling point elevation. All right, so what is a solution? Now this is one of those things, um, this is one of those things that it has a technical definition, but then it has the real definition that scientists use. Okay, so it's technical definition of a solution is it is a mixture. And see, we've been using the word solution all semester, haven't we? Go get the solution, go get the solution, make the solution. But now we're gonna learn just a little bit more of the technicalities. It is a, it's a mixture that has the same composition, color, density, and taste throughout. It's clear, not colorless. So, I mean, so we have Kool-Aid is our little drawing there. Isn't that a good drawing of Kool-Aid Man? My son Joshua drew that. I think he's a really good artist. I was like, draw Kool-Aid Man. And he just did that. Just, and I'm like, he even got the little picture so good in the ice. Anyway, um, so you can think of a solution as Kool-Aid. Now, in chemistry, a sol this is the confusing part. Don't get too confused. But a solution is a mixture. But we end up calling a mixture something different than a solution. So there's this technical definition, and then it's what real scientists use, okay? And what real scientists use is they will say that a mixture is something where you can still determine the things that mixed into it. So like a mixture, I say, is chocolate milk. Because chocolate milk, you can taste the chocolate, you can taste, taste the milk, and it has varying amounts in it. Where something like a solution of, you know, calcium carbonate and water, it's not very sol soluble, but you know, something like that, um, we, we think of that more as a solution. So, the, its technical defi definition is this. But what you can think of practically is that a solution is like Kool-Aid. So when scientists are talking about solutions, usually they're clear, they can have a color, and they're not chocolate milk. If you had chocolate milk, you'd call it a mixture. You wouldn't call it a solution, even though solutions are, techni mix are technically mixtures. Okay, so there's two kinds of mixtures. And one is homogeneous and the other one is heterogeneous. How can, what, on our prior knowledge, what does homo mean? Same, Same and hetero? Different. Different. So homogeneous is the same throughout. So normally Kool-Aid is the same throughout. It doesn't have layers. If your Kool-Aid has layers, you might need to throw it out. So heterogeneous has layers. Like um Italian salad dressing so we have a little picture of that over here and and it's you know it's got those two layers the oil floats on top of the water the oil top floats on top of the the um, on top of the uh, vinegar usually now in chemistry we have this thing and it looks like a big teardrop and then at the bottom it has a thing you turn that's called a stopcock and you use that to separate layers. And when you become a real chemistry major, because I know you're going to, because so much money and so much fun, one of the things you do is you pull chemicals out of solutions and isolate them, and that's what you use a lot. You shake it up in that thing, and then you use either like an oil-based thing or a water-based thing to pull the chemicals out into a layer, and then you can separate it out. It's pretty fun. It's, you know, it's always fun when you've got all the glassware everywhere and things are bubbling and colored and interesting looking stuff. You feel like you might be making Frankenstein or something because, you know, that's what it always looks like in the movies. All right, so here are some more vocabulary words. Solution versus colloid versus suspension, okay? So a solution is clear. It can be colored, but it's clear. 
A colloid is cloudy, like milk. It has droplets or something suspended in it. With milk, it's little fat globules that's suspended in it. But um, it's, it's cloudy for some reason. And the suspension, it has stuff, it has stuff um, suspended in it, like a colloid, but it's big and it's chunks. You have chunks suspended in it. Now, um, the, the no-shake Italian salad dressing, the stuff that's low fat, that is a good example of that. It's got those little chunks all suspended in it and you don't have to, to shake it. It doesn't settle out. Okay, any questions so far? These words aren't too hard? One thing that makes them hard is you have a lot of stuff that starts with the letter S. You have solutions, suspensions, we're gonna talk about solutes and solvents. So a lot of words that are similar. But we're gonna do some labs and it's gonna help. That's the wrong class, let's mark that one out. Go back to this one. Okay, so solutes and solvents. What's, do y'all know these words? Solute, solvent, what's a solvent? It's the thing that does the dissolving. So a solute gets dissolved. Ah, it's not a draw anymore. That'll do. Well, it gets dissolved. And solvent is what does the dissolving. Now, how you remember this is I made your V very big. So everybody see that big V? I want you to draw little waves in it. I want you to fill that V up with liquid. Because usually what does the dissolving is a liquid. Either it's dry cleaning fluid or it's water. Water is considered the universal solvent. So just say, everybody put water in your V and you'll keep them straight. Okay, all right with that? All right, next idea. Solvation, look, another S word. Solvation is the attraction of a solvent with ions of a solute. So you've got a solvent and it, it, the, what is getting dissolved has ions, positive and negative charges. And so that solvent is attracted to the, to the solute and pulls it apart, and it's called solvation. Disassociation is what, is what happens when the ionic compounds separate from one another. So solvation causes disassociation. I told you this was vocabulary. You're all right with it? Not too bad so far? Now, what is the universal thing that dissolves has to do with this word, aqueous. What does aqueous look like? Water in Spanish, right? Aqua. Uh, so it's things dissolved in water. And water dissolves lots of stuff. Now, how do things dissolve? I have a good little picture of it drawn in your notes. But how it is, is so like, you've got these sodium and chloride ions. We'll make the sodiums big. Okay, and this is positive. So water is negative on the oxygen side and positive on the hydrogens. So the negative, the negative oxygen will go be attracted to this positive sodium and then it'll pull it off. Same thing with the chlorine. The hydrogens will be attracted to the chlorine, go line up with it and pull it off. So that's why it says Mickey Mouse attacks. Mickey Mouse attacks it. Does that make sense to you? How dissolving happens. Okay, next idea. And so what happens is it dissociates. Now what can dissolve? It's like, who knew there was that much about dissolving? But there it is. What can dissolve? So the first thing, our first example is sweet tea. This is something we know about as Southerners. You go somewhere not in the South and you ask for sweet tea and they give you unsweet tea and a sugar packet. Does that work? No because the sugar does not want to dissolve in the tea because it's too cold. But if you do it while the tea's hot, it works. So one of the things you can dissolve is a solid like sugar in a liquid like tea. Okay, now what about this one, fish soda pop? What's something else that can be dissolved besides solids and liquids? Gas, gas right. So gas, can be dissolved in a liquid 
So with soda pop, it's carbon dioxide that's dissolved in it. With fish, and there's our clues here, what do fish breathe? Do fish breathe water? No. no. They breathe the same thing you do. They breathe oxygen gas that has been dissolved into the water. So that can cause a lot of problems. If water is too warm, the oxygen can come out and you'll have a fish kill where suddenly there's all these dead fish everywhere by thermal pollution. So, um, so fish have to have the dissolved oxygen in the water. They breathe it through their gills. All right, there's another one here too. You can dissolve metal in metal. Now, how in the world can you do that? Uh, and it's this. Example is brass. Other alloys, the other word alloy, that's where you mix metals, and you melt them and then mix them together, and they dissolve into each other. So that's another way that things can be dissolved. Any questions? All right, y'all are doing great so far. These are not, this is not a big section. It's not a whole lot of notes, not a whole lot of concepts. So we're going to be able to get through this. Okay, the next idea, rate. What can speed up dissolving a solid in a liquid? What can speed up that sugar getting dissolved in your sweet tea? Heat. heat. heat yes. If you heat up the tea, it's going to do much better getting that sugar in. What else are you going to do to it? You're going to stir it. Can you think of the third one? Do you think sugar would dissolve better in big lumps? or little fine grains. Fine grains. And that's how, have y'all gotten those little tubes of Kool-Aid? It's sugar. It's not like crystal light. They're little tubes of sugar. And you pour the Kool-Aid in your ice, in your ice water and stir it up and it makes Kool-Aid. And it's, and the reason why the real sugar can dissolve is it's such fine grains. I think that stuff's very delicious. <laughs> So, uh, how did I write this? Let's see, did I write particle size? What did I write? I wrote particle size. And uh, that the, the smaller dissolves faster. Because it has more surface area. Remember how we learned about how small things have more surface area per volume? That's why Chihuahua dogs shiver and St. Medard's never do. All right, now how much can dissolve? More words to know and half of them begin with the letter S, but all right. How much can dissolve? Uh, how much can dissolve at a given temperature is called the solubility. Um, and that's what I gave you that chart. It's on the back side of your metal reactivity chart I want you to look at. And see how the pig is saying nag-sag? Nag-sag tells, uh, these are the rules for solubility. So this is one of the things, you memorize nag-sag, and then the rest has got exceptions. But nag-sag will get you through most things, and we will talk about, <laughs> I'm getting a look. They will talk about what that means. It tells you what can dissolve and what can't, okay? So nag-sag, we'll do that. The next thing is how much is dissolved, and the symbol is square brackets. Does anybody know what this one is? Concentrated. Yes, concentration. So the concentration is one of the things that we're going to do math for, yay, uh, which we're going to figure out something called molarity and molality, and that is where you figure out the concentration. We have to know how exactly how concentrated things are in chemistry. Um, how concentrated of an acid. You don't want one more concentrated than you need. Somebody might get murdered. Okay? No more can dissolve at that temperature. What do you think the word is for that one? You, we say this with like, you've got a towel, and it will not absorb any more liquid. Do we say that towel is saturated? Yes. So no more can dissolve at that temperature. It's called saturated. Another S word. Saturated, okay? Now, if more can dissolve, what would that be called? Unsaturated, yes. Unsaturated, more can dissolve at that temperature. Okay, the next one, 
more is dissolved than can be dissolved at that temperature. Now, what in the world does that mean? More is dissolved than can be dissolved? That sounds impossible. You've actually seen it. What you do is like, you can do it with sugar. You take sugar and put it in water and you dissolve it at a high temperature. Then you cool it down very, very carefully without bumping it. And um, it will, the sugar, the, the sugar molecules in the water will have a hard time getting organized into the crystal lattice. But then, so, so then it has more dissolved in it than would normally dissolve at that temperature. And then you can add just a little bit of crystal sugar and that will give it the catalyst it needs to build the crystal lattice on and it'll go and it'll all crystallize. You saw it with the hand warmers. Remember how they were liquid? Then we popped the little metal thing in them, which gave it just enough energy for it to crystallize into the crystal lattice. So those were super saturated solutions, the hand, hand warmers. When we gave it the energy, they became saturated and um, the crystals came out of solution. They quit dissolving. There's a, a lab that we're gonna do, but I don't know if we're gonna do it the regular way. You take the same chemical as the hand warmers. You super saturate it, and then you get it uh, cooled down. It's still liquid. You put a crystal in and it'll go and it'll crystallize just like the hand warmers. It's hard to do and it's messy. So we might just get out the hand warmers again and do them again, because they're fun, okay? All right, so what is it called when more can dissolve at that temperature? It's called supersaturated, and that's why we have Superman. Supersaturated, another S word. Supersaturated, more dissolved than can at that temperature. And how you do it is you heat it up and then cool it down and don't give it time to organize. All right, the next one. If something can dissolve, what's it called? It starts with an S. Oh, yeah. Soluble, yes. Yeah. Y'all are going to be great on this. If it can't dissolve, it's called insoluble. Not insoluble, but insoluble. If things can mix, do you know what that's called? It's not called mixable, it's called missable. Missable. If you can mix stuff, it is missable. And if it cannot mix, it is not unmissable, but immissable. All right, that wasn't too terrible, was it? We can learn those words. All right, you know vocabulary is easier than math, isn't it? So the vocabulary matching, that's gonna be an easy part of the test. Boy, that's hard to read. I'm no good at writing with this little pen. I'm no good at writing in general, but with this little pen, I'm terrible. Okay, more about sol solubility. Okay, have you ever noticed how you cannot wash Sharpie off with soap and water? You noticed that before? But have you ever tried to get Sharpie off with alcohol? A lot of times it'll come off, and it definitely comes off with goof off. If you, do y'all know about goof off? Comes in a little spray, and you can get off sticker goo. You can get off Sharpie. It's very strong. You gotta be careful with it. Um, but what it is is that if some, if a, we learned about polarity, that water is polar. It had just like the Earth has poles. Water has a positive and a negative end to it. Um, there are other chemicals that don't have a positive and negative end. Remember when we did that lab where we built the models and looked at it and we were looking for symmetry? So things that are nonpolar are oils, alcohols, um, organic chemicals are usually nonpolar, where water and salts and things like that are polar. And in general, the rule is like dissolves like. So... Ionic things can dissolve, be dissolved by polar. Uh, things that are covalent and nonpolar can be dissolved by nonpolar. So polar dissolves polar, and that would be water and water-based markers. You know the water-based markers, Crayola cells, that you can wash out with water? Is that, that, that means we know those are nonpolar markers. And nonpolar dissolves nonpolar. So Sharpie and Goof Off, 
If you ever, Sharpie can come off with a goof off. One time, okay, I, I had bought this thing. I was all excited about it. I bought these blank dice. And I wrote ions on them for the students to do the lab where you put the anion and the cation together randomly and write ionic compounds. I was so excited. So I took Sharpie, just like the instruction said, and I wrote the ions on each side, passed them out to the students. They started rolling them. Immediately, the Sharpie came off. The lotion, especially on the girls' hands, um, took the Sharpie right off. That totally didn't work. So you saw how I changed it. Now we use regular dice and we have those little wheels to do that lab because the lotion is nonpolar. The Sharpie was nonpolar. The lotion took the Sharpie off. It was a great disappointment that my blank dice that I paid money for didn't work. Okay, there are also rules for solubility of chemicals. Um, and this is our nag sag. And honors is gonna have to do more with this than regular. Honors, um, knowing solubility is an important part that honors is gonna have to do. And in, in what do I mean? These are in general your soluble chemicals, nitrates, acetates, group one, um, sulfates, ammonia, and group 17. And there are some exceptions to those. So let's write this down. Uh, so you just have it in your notes. So these are our soluble. It's nag, sag, find a little place. I know you, you have pictures on your, your margins, but find a place. And it's nitrates, acetates, group one, sulfates, ammonia, and group 17. And there are exceptions, of course, especially to the sulfates and group 17. But what will dissolve? You can remember nag sag. You remember the little pig saying nag sag. I don't know what nag means. Nag is a horse. So maybe the pig is in the barnyard and the horse has saggy skin and he's making fun of the horse saying nag sag. That works. Now we know why the pig is saying nag sag. We figured it out. Okay, so you have them on the back of your activity series in your notebook. So you, this paper I gave you laminated, you're supposed to have that in your notebook. So find that you'll be using it this, this chapter. Remember, y'all would turn it over and I said, we're gonna do that later. Well, now's the day. Okay, the next word is precipitate. Its abbreviation is PPT. And in general in science, it means one state of matter forming in another one. So on the weather you hear there's gonna be precipitation, that means there's gonna be snow or rain in the gas of our atmosphere. In chemistry, we don't usually use it like that. In chemistry, we pretty much do everything in liquid, and when a solid comes out, that's what we call a precipitate. So it's a solid forming in a liquid, in generally in chemistry. Now, hard water and soft water. Have y'all heard of those terms before? You ever heard your mom or grandmother talk about hard water, the water's hard and the soap doesn't work? Ever been to the beach? And, had to, and washed your hair or washed your hands and you use just a little bit of soap and it makes way too much lather because it's soft water at the beach and we have harder water here so it's, it's a little, um, a little uh, different how soap works there. So hard water, it has mostly dissolved calcium ions in it but other salts too. So it's got some ions in it, metal ions. Soft water doesn't. And there are problems with hard water. Soaps and detergents don't lather well. There's an R missing right there. They don't lather well. And it makes soap scum. Do you ever have problems with soap scum like on your shower door or something? That's cause of hard water. So it makes soap scum build up. And then it also makes miserable, uh, minerals build up 
in pipes and radiators and tea kettles and it will mess up your plumbing older houses they have to have someone come in and replace all the plumbing and we do have hard water here here in dallas we have hard water um, there are certain areas of the country that don't but we do okay more about concentration i told you there's math to do with it well concentration can be this is more vocabulary it's vocabulary that has to do with concentration and like how the other vocabulary all ended up almost starting with an S and that made it confusing. What makes this confusing is there's too many things that start with M. I think we need a committee formed to rename some of this stuff so it's not so confusing. Okay, the first one is mass percent. And how they get mass percent is the mass of solute divided by the mass of solvent times 100. So that's one way to express concentration. They do this in industry a lot. In industry, they don't measure out uh, chemicals in little beakers or graduated cylinders or cups or teaspoons. They weigh it. They just use these big vats and weigh everything. So this is something that's used in chemical industry. I've never used it because I've always been on the academic side of chemistry. But this is on the industry side, a lot of times that's how you express concentration. This is how we do it in chemistry class. That's why I got little stars around it. And it's called molarity, molarity. It's the moles of solute divided by liters of solution. The units are moles written as a capital M and, this, and then you put it in the concentration brackets. So on the acids we used in class, uh, we used three molar hydrochloric acid. We used six molar hydrochloric acid in our last lab and it would have this three capital M in brackets and another chemist would know that's telling them how strong the acid is. How careful you have to be really. Does that make sense? So we're going to do problems especially with that one. We might do a few with the others but especially that one. This is the one I do all the time. When I'm making solutions for our lab I, I do this and how I set it up is I do it as um, a ratio. I cross multiply and solve for X and I find out how to mix the, the chemicals we need for lab. The next one is called molality. And how close is that? Molarity and molality. They're different. And molality, instead of being is moles of solute, same as molarity, but this time we're dividing by kilograms of solvent. So this one is one that uses a little bit of the weighing thing, and it's used more in industry, just like mass percent, and its symbol is little m. Once again, how, how light can we make all of this stuff so it's confusing? But molality is little m, molarity is big m. Can we follow that? Okay. Now, there's an old way, so old I'd forgotten about it, but it's in the book that this class is on, and it was back in the acid cabinet, and it's called normality. It's an old way of showing concentration of acids. You multiply the molarity, like 3M, times the number of hydrogens in the acid that come off in the water. So, if you see normal, the, what you do is you get out your phone, and you Google convert normal to molar and you do it because if you find normal it's an old thing and it's not around I mean I've I remember seeing it on some old stuff in the 80s when I was a chem major um, I haven't seen it since then until I was looking through the our, our stock room of chemicals here and I found a really ancient looking bottle of acid and I and I called my son because he's in the doctorate program of chemistry I'm like what is this he's like oh yeah mom remember that's the old way it's like oh that's too far back for me to remember okay common speech so in common speech we talk about things as concentrated versus what's not concentrated it starts with the D dilute you've heard of dilute so in common, common speech, we call things dilute if they're not real concentrated. And we still do that some in chemistry class. I'll make a very dilute solution of acid. I know it won't hurt anybody. It's just dilute. Okay, now here's an example math problem. What is the molarity? So we got to know it's moles of solute over liters of solution of a solution that has 10 grams of sodium hydroxide dissolved in 100 milliliters of water in a volumetric flask. We're going to get to use volumetric flasks. They look like this. 
I, I think I drew one on your thing. And they have like a little line, and then uh, you fill up your the um you fill up the fluid exactly to that line, and we'll, a little little line etched with acid. Okay. So first of all, we need moles. We have grams, so we have to convert grams to moles. And what what goes with grams? M and M's, molar mass, right? So this is uh, calling back a little bit to our stoichiometry unit, stoichiometry. So we look up the molar masses and we add them up. And for sodium hydroxide, it's 40 grams per mole. Okay, now we start with what we know. Our 10 grams of sodium hydroxide that we were given in our problem. And it was dissolved in 100 milliliters of water. So it was 10 grams per 100 milliliters. Are we good with that so far? Okay, now we want to change these grams to moles. So we're going to put this 40 grams of sodium hydroxide on bottom and our one mole from right there on top. One mole of sodium hydroxide. So we got rid of grams, so that's good because we want moles in the numerator. But now we've got to change this 100 milliliters to liters. So we need the relationship between that. We need milliliters on top because we want them to cancel out. And we're going to put liters on bottom. How many milliliters are in a liter? A thousand, because milli means thousand, right? And millipede has a thousand legs, not really. Milliliters cancel out. You multiply any number on top, you divide any number on bottom, and it is 2.5 molar. And we can put it in little concentration brackets. Is that all right? Not terrible? You just have to know what the definition is, put it in the railroad tracks. That's how the problems are. And you get a worksheet tonight to practice it. That's one of the things you picked up. Okay, next idea. Can I scroll? Okay. Solubility curves. These are a lot like our curves we looked at last time. Remember how you would go up the side and then go, go over to hit the line and go down? We're going to do exactly the same thing, but this time we're going to figure out how much can dissolve at a temperature. So if we want to know um, how much uh, potassium chloride can dissolve at 40, centimeters, 40 degrees Celsius. We go up till we hit the line, and then we go over to see what temperature it is, and um, uh, or how, how many grams it is, and it's 40. Does that make sense? You're going to use it exactly like how you did last time. You just start on whichever side they give you, go up till you hit the line, and then go over to the other side and see what it says. Um, yours didn't come off good, so I drew another one that, for better, but uh, you'll get some practice reading those. Okay, next one. Solubility of gases. We talked about solubility of liquids. Well, what about solubili solubility of gases? What makes gases dissolve better? So let's think about Coca-Cola or RC. Uh, got, got your RC and your moon pie. You're out by the pool. And it's hot in the summertime. Is your RC going to go flat faster or slower than it would in the winter time at your Christmas party or your holiday party? It'll go, it'll go flat faster. So um, what helps gases dissolve is cold, actually. Heat makes, it does the opposite of the solids. And, uh, and then the other thing is when you open it up, what do you hear? What is that? Pressure. It's the pressure. So gases dissolve better under pressure and if they're cold. And we know cold doesn't exist. It's a lack of heat, but you know what I mean. All right, for examples, soda, beer, champagne, and sparkling water like Perrier, what chemical do you think they have dissolved into them? It's CO2, carbon dioxide gas, the same thing you breathe out. Um, and also, that CO2 gas becomes carbonic acid in solution. So a lot of times on your ingredients list 
for your soda will say carbonic acid, and that's what it is. That's the fizz. And see, it's the H's combining with the CO2 makes H2CO3, the water. See how water is added to that there, 2 H's that O? Okay, now particles in solution. When ionic solids dissolve, they become charged ions in solution. So you dissolve some salt and some water, then you have charged sodium and chloride ions in the solution, and they can conduct what? There's a hint in your drawing there. What can they conduct? Electricity. Electricity. You see that lightning bolt? So why do the lifeguards make you get out of the pool when you hear thunder? Thunder! Uh, we used to belong to the, the city pool. Um, my old neighborhood had a pool, but my new neighborhood doesn't have a pool, so we would join the city pool every year. And those teenagers, nothing against teenagers, they would hear pretend thunder. A loud truck would go by on the road and they'd go, thunder, because they just wanted to sit around and talk and play hacky sack. And, and all the kids had to sit out on the side of the pool. I was like, that was not thunder. There's not a cloud in the sky. That was a big truck that just went down the road and y'all knew it, but anyway. And so, it's because if you're in a pool, it's got uh, ions in it, like chlorine in pools, then if they get hit by electricity, you can get fried. Because it conducts electricity, and we don't want to get fried, so we obey the lifeguard even when they're lying. Okay, any questions about that? Um, we also saw that in lab. Remember the lab we did where we did, did the little conductors and we put it in the different solutions and we saw if they conducted or not? When they conducted, they were, had those ions in solutions, and those are called electrolytes. An example is Gatorade. Um, other examples is ba like batteries. Um, and we will talk more about this in the acid base unit. We're going to talk more about We have one unit left after this, a mini unit, that we're going to do next week on pH. And we will talk more about batteries and electrolytes then. Um, so, you know, Gatorade was invented. If you, if you drink too much water, you can die. If you drink too much water too fast, it happens. Um, because remember in biology where you learned about um, hypotonic, isotonic, hypertonic solutions, osmosis. Remember that chapter? Okay, well, you have a certain salinity to you, and water doesn't. So that is what causes people to die, is that imbalance. Remember how nature likes balance? And so if you drink a lot of water too fast, you are making your body off balance. So at University of Florida, they didn't want their football players dying from drinking too much water, so they made Gatorade. And if you've ever noticed, it's salty. It is a salty tasting liquid. They, you can chug as much as you want, you will not die, because it's the same salinity as you are. So it keeps you in homeostasis. And that's why athletes drink it, because they can just chug it, no matter how thirsty they are, and they won't die from brain swelling. I think that's what kills you about it, is it affects your brain. All right, it happened to some little girls. There were some little girls, in, I think in South Carolina, and they were pretending like they were drinking alcohol and chugging, and they killed themselves at a little spin the night party. Isn't that sad? They didn't know their science. Well, they were, pretend they were pretending to do something they shouldn't have been doing. But still, they didn't deserve death. But if they had known about that, if they had done Gatorade, they would have been okay, but not water. Okay. Uh, what are the effects of solute particles? When you add a solute, it affects some stuff, okay? Um, so it, it, if you add a non-volatile solute, if it was volatile, it would just evaporate off. It wouldn't make any difference. But if it's a non-volatile solute to a pure substance, it, it changes the boiling point, okay? So you add salt to your spaghetti water, is it gonna boil at a higher temperature or a lower temperature, do you think? It's gonna be higher. It causes a rise, it causes a rise in boiling point, which is uh, abbreviated BP. So, you know how like Instapots make food cook at a higher temperature so they cook faster? That's what adding salt to the water does too. It lets it boil at a higher temperature. Mm -hmm. It's a higher temperature before it gets to that latent heat and then your food cooks better and faster. Yes? Sure. Uh, write a pass and write your name on the calendar on today. 
Okay, now what about freezing point? They add salt to the roads. Why? Is it to make the freezing point higher or lower? Lower. They want it to stay liquid. So I'll cause a lower freezing point, and that's abbreviated FP. Um, uh, 